The political decisions people make will affect many lives. Many people see politics as the government and the laws being made. While that is true, it's way more complicated than that. I don't know what type of procedure is this. Some of you may be aspiring to positions of leadership in the political arena. And I accepted full responsibility. But the question is, why do you want to leave? It has everything to do with you. Every law that is made will impact many. Sometimes the decisions do affect people negatively. Therefore, it's very important to note that every vote that you cast will either break or make people. Politics with GA brings you the latest political news as well as insight and analyst as we discuss the most important issues that matter. Hello and welcome to Politics with GA. President Mohamed Buhari for the fourth time has rejected his assent to the electoral bill which was passed to him to sign into law by both the Senate and the House of Representatives for the fourth time. The president wrote to the National Assembly and said he cannot sign the electoral bill into law at this time as the country was preparing to go to the 2019 general elections. He said that he can only assent to it after next year's elections, adding that if done now, it will end up causing uncertainty and crisis in the country. President Buhari said that he would only sign the bill after the elections, just as he identified some aspects of the bill that should be corrected by the lawmakers. He also gave the legislators the conditions that he will sign the bill if they state that the bill will come into effect after the 2019 elections. The coalition of United Political Parties has described the refusal of assent to the 2018 Electoral Act Amendment Bill by President Mohamed Buhari as an invitation to electoral anarchy. This was made known in a statement issued by its spokesperson, Mr. Ikenga Ugochinyere. According to him, each of the four times the Electoral Amendment Bill was presented to the President for assent, he waited until the last day of his constitutionally allowed 30 days before responding. He expressed his belief that signing the Electoral Amendment Bill into law would have guaranteed the conduct of the freest and most credible election in Nigeria's history, and that the refusal of the President's assent would allow opportunity for violence in next year's general elections. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo has urged Nigerians to vote wisely in the 2019 general elections, saying that Nigerians must only vote leaders that have the capacity to drive the growth and development of the country. He added that he would not campaign for any particular candidate. The former president said this in Iwo in Osho State at the 27th annual Owu National Convention. He added that only credible leadership will promote good governance, hence the need for Nigerians to choose wisely in the poll. The Olowu of Kuta, the chairman of the Supreme Council of Owu Obas, Oba Ahmed Oyelude, was also present in the convention. Oba Oyelude called on the people of Owu to participate in politics in order to contribute more to the national development. Four political parties have presented candidates below the mandatory age of 35 years for the 2019 presidential elections. This was revealed by the National Commissioner of INEC, Antonia Okosi Simbine. Although she did not reveal the identities of the parties, it has been gathered that they have violated the law and might be disqualified by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Mrs. Okosi Simbine explained why there are so many political parties saying that the commission did not want to disqualify people from participating in the electoral process. And according to her, the number of political parties and candidates would determine the nature and size of ballot papers in next year's elections. The national leadership of the All Progressive Congress is in a tight spot over whether to punish some of its high-ranking members for their anti-party activities or not. Among those being considered for punishment are the governor of Ogun State, Senator Ibikunle Amosu, and his Imo State counterpart, Mr. Rochas Okorocha. It was also learned that the case of the governor of Zamfara State, Alaji Abdulaziz Yari, has also not been given attention by the national leadership of the party since the governor was said to have stopped his criticism 
of the APC National Chairman, Comrade Adams Oshomare, and his team. It was gathered that although the National Chairman of the party, Mr. Adams Oshomare, is favorably disposed to punishing them, some members of the National Working Committee of the party felt the party should tarry a little. Sources close to the party also said that the Oshomare led committee was constrained by the disposition of President Muhammad Buhari to the aggrieved members of the party who had gone to court to challenge the positions taken by the committee concerning primaries conducted in their states. The governorship candidate for the All Progressive Congress in Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Songwolu, has stated that he would accept all the help offered to him by the current governor of Lagos State, Mr. Akiomi Ambode. It must be noted that both went against each other in the APC primaries and that Mr. Sonwolu emerged as winner. As regards Mr. Ambode, the governorship candidate stated that they are members of the same political family, building a strong coalition and a formidable force that will deliver victory to the party in the upcoming elections in Lagos. Concerning his main opponent, Mr. Jimmy Agbaje of the People's Democratic Party, he said he respects Mr. Agbaje, but that on the political landscape, their pedigrees and experiences are not the same as it holds more public service experience, effective representation and credentials. I spoke with Mr. Olukayode Awokoya of the Abundant Nigeria Renewal Party, ANRP. He is the Atiosa federal constituency candidate for the party in the House of Representatives. We spoke about his ambition and plans for Atiosa constituency and also other issues concerning Lagos state and politics in general. Thank you very much for joining us on Politics with GA, Mr. Olukayode Awokoya. Thank you very much, Benga. Good day. What's your take on President Buhari's refusal to ascend the Electoral Amendment Act bill for the fourth time? Its excuse is that it's too close to elections and might disrupt it. Well, it's unfortunate that something that is meant for the good of the country always ends up being politicized. Not just the Electoral Act, you see other issues of the country. It's a question of which divide you know, do you belong to. But I think that there are so many good things in the proposed Electoral Act, and I don't know why he has not signed it. Uh, I'd rather prefer that he did sign it than he did not, because a lot of the th things that were put there are lessons learned from the existing law, the, the, the pitfalls. And previous elections, yes. yes. So meant to address some of the pitfalls to give us a better election. Mm. So I. Certainly, it's going to be an argument, you know, but I think the, the proposed act has more of good than bad for the country. The Senate will sit in plenary tomorrow mm -hmm. and uh, probably debate uh, this as to whether to override uh, the absent. Do you think if they have the power to override it, they should go ahead or it might be too dicey, knowing the kind of uh, volatile political environment we live in? Well, they have the constitutional power to override it. So, you know, but their need to go ahead will probably depend on if they can muster mm. the necessary votes. So I'm sure they will do that before they attempt to override it. It might not be nice politically to attempt to override mm. and lose the votes. But I think they have the powers, they have the rights, and I will support an override in the interest of the nation. Now let's talk about, let's bring things back home. You're an indigenous of Lagos, you're very concerned about the things that happen in Lagos and that's why uh, you want to run for office. But before we get to your uh, uh, political ambitions, Lagos State yeah. is almost in a Hobbesian state uh, since Governor Ambode lost his primary elections. The volume of traffic and trash has thrown up severe hardship uh, for its citizens. What is really happening and what can be done to arrest the situation? I'm sure this is not the Lagos uh, of your dream. Well, even before he lost his primary, Lagos State was already in filth. Lagos State was not working for all. Uh, Lagos State has so much potential to, to, to grow the economy of the nation. So I believe what needs to be done is for people to just be accountable to, for those who put them in office and not accountable to themselves. 
So in every sphere of governance, if it's, if it's road transportation, if it's healthcare, if it's security, Lagos State has the resources, the well without housing to do what is good and what is very value adding to the citizens. But the question is, are those in authority, is there a desire to do the good for the general people or the good for a few? But the people have almost resigned to their fate and they see spending three hours in traffic on their commute to walk and back from work every day as a normal occurrence in life and there's nothing they can do about it. Well, when you lose, when you resign to faith, so mm. people should take actions. And the first action is to call those in authority, you know, and ask for some accountability. Mm. There must be a commissioner for transport. There is a governor. They have a local government chairman. They have a house of rep representing them. They have a senator representing them. They should call people in authority and put them on the spot to ensure that they deliver on what people in authority should do. Not only during electoral cycles. No, yes. not only during electoral cycles, at all times. Actually, mm. the problem with citizens, I see in Nigeria is, they see that call of accountability as once in four years. Mm. They don't even want to stay out mm -hmm. and devote one day. However, the smart politicians have found that out and they know that after one day, they'll just go back to the slumber. So. Citizens should demand accountability every moment of the day. And when people in authority feel the heat, they have no option but to deliver on what is mm. right. You're the Aban Abundant Renewal... Nigeria. Abundant Nigeria Renewal Party yes. uh, House of Representatives candidate for Etiosa uh, Federal Constituency. That's correct. Why the foreign to politics and why do you want to go to the Green Chambers? Well... Why the foreign into politics? You know, you have to stop complaining about things on social media or in your relaxation and comfort zones and engage the system. And as of today, the process of engaging the authorities or engaging the political system is through political parties. There's no room for an independent candidate. And that was why, together with like minds, we started a party like two years ago and this party is made up of professionals, well-meaning Nigerians, young and old, but mainly people who, in their own little way, have proved their mettle. And we are desirous of bringing a renewal to the land. And that's why it's in our name. We don't have something called movement. We don't have something for the masses. No. The name is Abundant Nigeria. So from that name, we want to tell everyone that a Nigeria that is abundant is possible for all. And the first point is to renew the country, to go back to even things that we used to enjoy. Time there was when people were leaving university, civil service, top companies, and students in their final year, they will have been kind of headhunted with all manner of promises. We give you a car, we give you a house. What happened to that? It still happens all globally. And that was in the past. That was in the past in Nigeria. So we want to renew back even to those days while we also offer what is contemporary at this time. What, uh, what would you say to critics that say that, you know, abundant Nigeria Renewal Party and all these parties with great slogans and uh, ideology yeah. are just selling utopian dreams that are not possible, that if you want to win elected position in Nigeria, you have to be part of the big to the APC or the PDP, that Nigerians' politicians don't have politics of ideology, that everybody is just there to, it's a means to get to power. And if that's what you have to do is to down with the devil, then that's what you have to do. Well, let me confirm to you that we do have an ideology. And if you see our party logo, it's a computer mm. with a leaf growing from it. I found a, that very interesting. A computer yeah. today, it talks about technology talks about knowledge. It is not a mistake that the top five, six companies in the whole world are either computer or technological companies. Computer knowledge is the wealth of the new world. And that's our ideology, not the ideology of self. Now go back to the old parties. You know, they are parties of circumstance. They, I could say that they were like government parastatals. PDP was more or less floated by the government of the day in 1988. And APC today is an offshoot of PDP. Mm. So they are like government parastatals, and you can't do more of the same and expect something different. 
Test us, try us. We have an ideology, and we're going to live with that ideology of renewal, renaissance, and respect in, in the country. We want to renew the country back. Renaissance that we want to become like a contemporary nation with the rest of the world. And we're talking of respect. Respect for Nigeria as an entity. Respect for Nigerians in every walk of life, wherever they go to. Today, you will agree with me that Nigeria has very little respect that keeps going down daily. Nigerians have very little respect that keeps going down daily in spite of their achievements you know, in the global scene. The respect is not there. So that's our ideology, and time is going to tell whether it's, an, it's a worthwhile ideology or just one of them. Now, what's your mission, and uh, what would you prioritize? What's your mission for the people of Ethiopia federal constituency? What do you think are the biggest issues that need to be addressed? Well, there are so many things that are needed in this constituency. Um, first and foremost, I would say that it's the wealth basket of both Lagos State and the country. Uh, the boundaries of Ethiopia, from Obaliende down to Aja, Languasa, houses, individuals, and businesses that control really the business of this nation. However, there's little or no government presence. We don't have public schools, either primary or secondary. There are very few. We don't have public hospitals. But by way of priority, my priority is largely in the area of healthcare and things that are associated with it. Healthcare can become a very big business, but healthcare for us, uh, our constituents, and I want to tackle this by not a knee-jerk approach, but ensuring that we tweak up the existing Healthcare Act of 2014. So if the people of Etiosa elect me into office, they can be sure that every resident of Etiosa will have health insurance for themselves and for their children. It's the sustainable way uh, to, to have healthcare coverage. We're going to also have technological parks in the, in the LGA so that knowledge can, you know, we can begin to teach our people the new economy, which is computer and not, you know, the old economy. Old thinking. We yeah. also, for every public uh, uh, educational uh, institution, secondary school or a public hospital, we're going to put solar panels uh, to ensure that there is power. We're going to have digital libraries here. Uh, and for the very many indigent communities, wherein we're all beside water, but no clean water to drink, no clean water to have their bath, we're going to sink many boreholes that are going to be for the public use. You know, we'll invest in the construction of the boreholes with the tanks and the taps, and they'll have it for free. They just have the responsibility of maintaining the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. A healthy people are going to be much more productive. That's just a tip in the iceberg. Um, my background is in accounting, finance. I'm going to work to get much needed global investment into this LGA in the area of real estate, in the area of tourism, such that the youths here are going to have so much work to do and that we'll even have to bring people from outside of the LGA. Now, so, you're not a typical career politician. It's yeah. your first outing. Yes. I mean, you left it this late, and your excuse is it's time to do something. Yes. Why should the people trust you? I mean, politicians have come to them in the past and promised heaven and earth and uh, de deliver on their promises. So why should the people of Etiosa trust that you have their best interest this time around? Oh, several reasons. I'll start from, you know, within. My family trusts me. My extended family trusts me. My local community where I live, I'm an ex co in the, uh, in the community where I live. Mm. They trust me. I'm the financial secretary of the ESCO. Um, I've worked in leading banks with headquarters in this LGA. I have been treasurer, wherein I kept monies in billions of dollars. I have been CFO, the chief financial officer, wherein the finances of the banks were kept in my care. I have looked after people as a human resource manager far back as 2001, over 2,000 people. So people here know me. They have tested me. And they have tested me. And so most of the people here, they do trust me because they have seen me trusted on those things that ordinarily, you know, you just don't put, any, you don't put anybody to be your treasurer. And mm -hmm. they, they can vouch for my credibility and for the fact that I like to get things done. And I assure you that if they give me their mandate, this LGA will be a model place for governance in the whole country mm -hmm. because we're going to 
not only for whatever we can do from government, the credible and the powerful private sector, the oil companies, the banks that are here, they would like to work with a credible person like me to invest on their CSR, on those common projects, uh, you know, water, street lighting. You know, when these companies want to give back to society, they are always being, you know, uh, disturbed by the red tape. I've been part of the it. The bureaucracy. The yeah. bureaucracy. I'm going to break that up. In fact, the slogan I'm going to offer to Etiosa people is, if you live or work in Etiosa, I'm your go-to man. You want to get something done, get across to my office, and I'll make it happen for you right there. Interesting. Now, going to Abuja, yes. um, Ben, I'm not being a prophet of doom, but mm -hmm. if you win, your party, the mm -hmm. ANRP, won't have a parliamentary majority. And all 359 members of the House of Reps, other members, mm -hmm. uh, would be doing their best to advance the interests of their parties and their communities. What strategies would you put in place to ensure that you get legislation that is favorable uh, to the people of Etiosa Federal Constituency. Thank you very much. You know, by the grace of God, when we win, um, unlike those who don't prepare, a lot of the key legislation that we want to pursue, we will have articulated mm -hmm. in consultation with past and also legislators that will win, that have won the election. So we'll consult people even before the, the House is uh, inaugurated. And, you know, when something is good for everyone, you don't, and politics is not attached to it. It's not going to, it's not going to, it's going to have an easier sale. It's a general good for the people. It's good for it. And, you know, we don't, all these initiatives are not meant to showcase anyone as being good or bad. A good thing is the current pension, you know, uh, reform act that has been run in the country. The coverage is not wide, but we have almost nine trillion in assets. There's no need to do politics. It's working. It's working. True. Without that nine trillion, of which the country borrows almost six trillion to fund, in, in, that is invested in federal bonds, will have gone to borrow abroad. So these are the kind of initiatives. Tell you what, for the health care bill that we're trying to introduce, we expect that nothing less than a trillion naira will be generated in health insurance funds every year. But we have the NHIS. Well, we need to redo the act a bit, mm. wherein we need to introduce a health sector fund custodian. You see, there have been issues of late that the funds are not being well managed. But if you look at the pension experience, when monies are paid through a PFA, they're held by that PFA and the custodian under very stringent rules. So we're going to introduce some custodian there, where when people pay their health insurance, it's technically going to go into the hand of that custodian, and monies are only disbursed purely for things under the act to pay health, you know, the healthcare providers to pay for research and other things so that the money is assured. That's why you could have nine trillion in assets that is growing. By the way, right. the nine trillion is bigger than the country's budget now. Right. I, if such, if our initiatives are supported, I foresee over the next decade, the health sector fund volumes will even be much more than the, that of pension. I'm going to have like minimum 30 million Nigerians having good coverage. No now, f finally, the national chairman of the major opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Prince Uche Secundus, says that the party does not have confidence in the activities of INEC, and it's a few months to the general elections, just a couple of weeks away. Uh, do you have confidence in, the, uh, in INEC being an unbiased empire, and how would you rate your chances at well, the polls? My chances... I'll answer the last question first. My chances are very, very high. I've lived and worked here for 27 and a half years. Um, just take about 2001, I was HR manager of a company that had over 2,000 employees. More than half of them live in Lagos. More than 80% of that stay on the island. People who I've related with here, who know me and who have seen what I've done, who know what I stand for, there are all many here and many have been rooting. These are people who ordinarily who will not vote. And these are people in their thousands and tens of thousands. So um, in terms of, and we have met with the electorate one-on-one, -on -one, and they want something new. The electorate are tired of the status quo. Now, talking of INEC, the truth is that in this process, we've had the opportunity to interact with a lot of INEC officials. Many of them mean well. Many of them are very intelligent. Many of but what we always fear is interference at the highest level to corrupt the process. Mm. Tell you what, I tell you the truth, 
in our work at the various worlds, we have received and seen information and intelligence of how things were probably corrupted in time past. So we want to beg INEC at the highest level, at the higher level, not to compromise itself. We want to appeal to the security agents not to allow thugs to disrupt coalition or voting centers, perhaps working in concert with some big parties. We want to call on the electorate within the law, come out and vote, and defend your vote under the law. If all these are done, we'll have much more credible elections than we had in 2015. And so we don't doubt the capacity of INEC. What we fear is interference From at, the highest level. at the highest level by those in authority, mm. just to make sure that they favor themselves. Interference at INEC and also the security agencies that are meant to be impartial, who have shown that truly they are not impartial. On that note, I'd like to say a very big thank you to you, Mr. Oluka Adewokoya of the Abundant Nigeria Renewal Party. All the best for your campaign and thanks for joining us in politics with you. Thank you very much, Benga. In Kenya, Makada Member of Parliament, George Aladwa, has asked Baringo Senator Gideon Moy to declare his presidential ambitions for the 2022 general elections. Mr. Aladwa said this during the Iteso Cultural Festival at Bomas of Kenya in Nairobi, saying that he and others are ready to support him. In his response to this, he said he would come home soon to speak out openly about its plans. He also urged the Tesla community and Busia County to value education and conserve culture. Despite showing interest in the state house race, Senator Moy has not publicly declared his stand, but his allies in Kanu have insisted that he will be on the ballot. The member of parliament and Busia Senator Amos Wako advised Mr. Gideon to stay close to Mr. Raila Odinga, former prime minister of Kenya, in order to increase his chances of winning the presidency. And in the Democratic Republic of Congo, President Joseph Kabila says he would leave office after the 23rd of December elections, but may seek re-election in the future. A 47-year-old Joseph Kabila said he would remain in politics after the poll as there's still a long journey ahead. He became president of the resource-rich African state in 2001 following the killing of his father, Lauren Kabila. His presidential mandate ended in 2016, but he has stayed in office as elections were repeatedly delayed. Dozens of opposition supporters have been killed in protests demanding that he steps down and elections be held. The Election Commission finally set 23rd of December as the election date, saying it had not been possible to hold the poll earlier because of difficulties in registering voters in a country with poor infrastructure and conflict in the mostly lawless eastern region. That's it on Politics with GA for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Benga Aboroa. The political decisions people make will affect many lives. Many people see politics as the government and the laws being made. While that is true, it's way more complicated than that. I don't know what type of procedure is this. Some of you may be aspiring to positions of leadership in the political arena. And I accepted full responsibility. But the question is, why do you want to leave? It has everything to do with you. Every law that is made will impact many. Sometimes the decisions do affect people negatively. Therefore, it's very important to note that every vote that you cast will either break or make people. Politics with GA brings you the latest political news as well as insight and analysts as we discuss the most important issues that matter.